Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. We're answering the top questions asked by couples today with our experts. So stick around. The Things You Should Know podcast It's our pleasure to welcome you each and every week. Some of the topics that we discuss on this podcast range from tech to innovation, health and wellness to, yes, unsolved mysteries and crimes. You picked a great day to join us. We've got a great podcast ahead for you. Sit back, relax, listen and enjoy. Thank you for joining us at Things You Should Know podcast. Hey, you. Yes, you. You're listening to Things You Should Know podcast. You like it? You like to hear more? Well, great. Would you like to know two different ways that you can support the podcast? All you got to do is when you're done listening to this podcast, go down into the notes, the show notes. There are two links there. Either one. Check them out. Thanks again. Have a great day. Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to leave uh, some information on the front end of this podcast. It's uh, a little longer than than normal, but I hope you're going to enjoy it because it's a lot of good content. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. Uh, We're going to be talking relationships today. We have two panelists that have come back who have been subject matter experts on our podcast before. So I really uh, we've done a a lot of work to make sure that this is going to be substantial for you. So I want you to listen all the way through. One of the things we offer, because both of these panelists are authors, are copies of their books. So uh, for the first 10 folks who go in and either leave a message on our Facebook page saying that you do want the uh, book or leave us a voicemail message uh, using the show note link, uh, we're going to send you uh, a copy of either of the book and you can indicate which author you'd like, uh, Miss Giovanna Gathers or Mr. Elam King. But again, make sure you go into our show notes. You can go to our Facebook page. You can leave uh, the comment there or you can send us a voicemail. Just simply let us know what you liked about uh, the podcast today and which of the books that you'd like to have. And I'd be more than happy to send it over to you. Our show, of course, has been pre-recorded and I'm going to send you into it right now. Thanks, guys, for listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks. Hey, guys, welcome into Things You Should Know podcast. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm your host. As always, it is my pleasure to welcome you into another podcast. Today is going to be uh, a very interesting show, so I want you to stick around all the way to the end. We've got two guests that are coming back today uh, that have been here before, and you've liked them both, according to the multiple downloads that I see on the stream. I hope everybody's having a good day. Have had a good week, a good month, and certainly are having a good year. If you've not done so already, it's a great time to go ahead now and subscribe to the podcast. No matter where you're listening to us, whatever platform you're listening to us on, we're on most all platforms for podcasts. So today we're going to talk relationships, and we're going to be spontaneous in doing so. 
I thought it'd be a good thing uh, to do as our experts, our relationship experts, what they would do uh, in these situations. And just so you know, they've not really seen any of these questions. So we're going to get their feedback very spontaneously. So, for example, in relationships, we bid for what we call emotional connections by asking questions that can range from the mundane to even soul searching questions. As you know, we do our research here and we've looked at women's health and men's health magazines. And we pulled a lot of these questions that people ask in short term and long term relationships. This is marriage. This is uh, just dating. So, uh, for example, women may ask emotional connection questions with their girlfriends. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel much different than men uh, ask, for example, with their pals? Did you see that motorcycle? Did you see that? Now, with her question or when her questions are asked to him, if it strikes a nerve, it's often because you're perceiving a disconnect in what she really wants to say. And that can come from both sides. This is according to Dr. Don Cole, who's a Houston based licensed marriage and family therapist certified by the Gottman Institute. But why? Why? Can her questions rile you up so easily? Your instinct to blow a gasket or to storm off is biological, according to him. Quote, men's bodies are hardwired to be hyper reactive to stress and danger. But modern danger is no longer a ferocious tiger. It, according to him, could be the pissed off wife or girlfriend. When she comes at you with touchy topics, your body sees danger which involuntarily triggers your fight or flight response to sail smoothly through any line of questioning. Recommend we be ready with some smart answers, which has gotten us to this point today. So we're going to ask our uh, coaches, our therapists today, uh, some of the same questions that are listed in these articles and let's have some fun. Let's see what they say. Of course, our goal here is always to empower through information We want you, if any of these questions are hindering you in your relationship, obviously to take their information seriously, maybe employ some of the solutions to see a different result. So today we have back with us uh, Miss Giovanna Gathers. Miss Giovanna has been with us before. She is a clinical psychotherapist and has a lot of experience from health and wellness into relationship and a multitude of different types of counseling. I'm going to let her expand on that. Welcome to the podcast, Miss Giovanna. Thank you so much, Kelly, um, and always a pleasure. So um, excited to be here tonight and see what you have for us, what questions you're going to throw with <laughs> us. And I, I, I know we're going to handle it, though, but um, thank you for that intro as well. Um, as you said, I am a licensed psychotherapist in the state of South Carolina and Georgia. I'm a clinical and a business um, coach as well as international speaker. I am a two-time author. Uh, I am a mother. I am a wife. In addition to probably ten other things that aren't even relevant tonight, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I definitely stay busy. But again, I just you know I count it all joy. I think it's just wow. a blessing to be able to do what you love and love what you do. Excellent. Well, thank you for for being with us and. Uh, for helping us out with this topic. I, I believe the audience is really going to enjoy this. And also back with us is Mr. Elam King, relationship coach. Uh, I think the last time Elam and we were together, we were talking about uh, relationships and what happened over COVID, for example. You know, and there was a lot of interest online for that. A lot of folks downloaded that. So uh, welcome back, uh, Elam. Hey, so first of all, thank you so much, Kelly, for even having me on the show. And Miss Giovanna, it is amazing to just even be able to stand next to you as well. Um, loving what you're doing out here. And anyone who is uh, looking to further um, in the side of the relationship space, absolutely love it. But um, so located here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, I am a author as well. And um, my space more involves around, you know, working with couples, whether it's dating, whether it's marriage, 
uh, whether it's pre-marriage and just really working to uh, kind of change some of these stats that exist out here um, from a, um, a divorce and just a breakup of family perspective. Um, and my mantra really is, is that in order for us to improve these communities, we really need to work on um, uh, our families. In order to work on our families, we really need to speak to the two main people that are a part of that, which is the man and the woman. So, um just out here wanting to share as much information as possible. So again, thank you for having me on. Well, thanks guys. And let's jump straight into it. So, uh, folks, listeners, this is, uh, how we're going to do this. I've got some questions here. I'm going to ask our panelists and these first few questions, I just want to get your natural responses to. So again, these articles come, one is from men's uh, dot com. The other is from women's health.com. And as we do here, these are scientific, meaning people were actually asked. There were studies done. This is not someone's opinion. This is actual uh, information that's come back through actual study. So the reason that's important is because, uh, for example, if you are going to run a Google ad and you want to target a certain audience, you want to get to statistics that tell you if selling glow sticks you know, during December is good or not. How would you know that? Well, Google knows because they can tell you how many people searched that in the month of December and how many people bought them. You don't want to sell a product that people are not searching for. So here we want to make sure you understand this information is valid. And I believe that many of you may be asking the same questions in your relationship. Hence, if we can get you an answer, we can provide you some assistance. So number one, The first question, this is from a woman to a man, and the question is very simple. It says, do you love me? Now, according to men's health, the reason they say this freaks men out is when a man asks validating, seeking questions, it's her biological programming, hungering for reassurance that her man does love her enough to stick around for the long haul. So, panelists, Miss Giovanna, we'll start with you. Do you agree or disagree with that? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. I, I, def- I don't think it's um, maybe indicative of all women. Certainly, I think if they're... Um, has has been some questions, if there have been some reason for her to wander or to question the uh, uh, security and the stability of the relationship, then I certainly can see a woman asking those types of questions. I'm, I'm thinking and I'm almost laughing because I'm like, I'm sure I've asked my husband that, but 
not necessarily for validation. I feel like I look more at his actions for validation. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I I know that from my experience that, you know, men are about action. So I look at what he does. I look at how he speaks his love language to me. So when I ask, it's more or less like joking. So I don't think it puts him on alert or alarms him or anything like that. Uh, and because normally he jokes right back with me, but I, I think that certainly there are women that aren't sure because I mean, let's face it. A lot of times women have ended the relationship under, you know, the wrong intentions or right. they have overlooked a lot of red flags. Um, they have made a lot of concessions and a lot of excuses. And so they're asking really is more or less, in my opinion, because, you know, is he going to say yes and and prove me, you know, wrong so much, meaning that is he going to say yes, because I'm I'm already questioning whether he really does or not. So if he says yes, then that puts my fears at ease. But if he says no, then I have been intuiting everything correctly. Like my my worst fears are coming true. So I think a lot of women are playing head games with that. Um, Like I said, they've seen the red flags. They know that there are some things that are not clicking and maybe that his words aren't lining up with his actions. And so they're really just trying to pick for information. Right. Mr. King, do you love me question? Why would that freak us out as men? Why would that freak us out? Um, Do you agree? I, I guess I should say that. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go both angles on that. Um, okay. The first thing I'm going to say, uh, just to um, throw a lifeline uh, to women of, of some of the reasons why that this happens. I mean, I always say that men um, listen to the things uh, that women say and echoing the point of Giovanna, but women watch the things, the actions that men do. And so... Um, you know, from a biological perspective, um, you know, it's automatically placed inside of uh, inside of a woman. Um, they're the se- they're the selectors. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and from a hormonal, excuse me, from a biological perspective, their goal is to select the best sperm um, that can you know be with them and, you know, uh, provide for their future. Right. So if you're right. looking to have somebody to provide for your future, you want to make sure you select the best person and you want that person to love you and uh, want to want to be with you for <clears throat> for the right reason. So um, the question is really uh, that's that that portion is them. They're doing a selection. Hey, am I about to select the person that's going to love me and carry me forward into this life? So mm-hmm. I, I, that's a great thing. I also want to say that from a from a hormonal perspective. Um, and this actually comes from a book uh, uh, from Dr. Luann Brizendine uh, when she speaks about uh, just the hormones and just the, in a book that she wrote called The Female Brain. Um, and then also um, in another book uh, of The Upgrade. So in that space, she's speaking about estrogen, which obviously is a hormone that we know that women have. Right. Mm-hmm. Along with it doing all the biological things and babies and stuff like that, it est- estrogen actually brings uh, a woman to the space of wanting to connect. Right. Mm-hmm. From a communication perspective. That's why, for example, um, you know, Kelly, you and I, we're not going to just get a bottle of wine and sit in the living room and just talk about, you know, just how our day or how are the kids or whatever. We're not we're not going to do that or, or sit on the bed, lay on the bed together and just watch TV and talk about, but Giovanna probably has done that at some point with maybe some of her people's right. Um, right. So that, that, but there's a drawing, there's a connection that exists there. Uh, camaraderie that, that just the, the, the natural hormone that is, um, you know, more prevalent inside of their system that brings that level of connection together. So that's why sometimes us as men, we can't understand it because obviously we have more of a testosterone dominant, right? right. Um, which is more of a standalone and, and, and warrior and all that good stuff situation. So um, I, I think that that also has a lot to do with it. Uh, so, you know, you have the biological aspect and then just also the subculture that exists in there uh, that kind of goes along with both of those that brings right. more of a camaraderie and conversation with women versus men, more of the subculture that exists there is to be unfortunately disconnected from your feelings. And so right. when Giovanna comes along and asks that question, we're like, huh? Like, really? I, I, I don't even know how I feel, but here you come with that question, you know? So, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Thank you both for that. As I read, it was reading through this article, 
I believe in some form or fashion, I've been married, it'd be 25 years in September. I've been asked all of these questions. <laughs> and in fairness, I've have I've asked some of them as well. Uh, and I think for me, it would just depend on where you are as in terms of your frame of mind and who you are. Elon, you and I talked in our last podcast and you asked me questions and I would give you three answers because I gave you answer from my 20 year old self, my 30 year old self and my current self. All those were just different people, different people. Yeah, they were different people. So I can see where a guy would. I don't know if I would freak out at any age, uh, maybe if I was really young and that, that I really read that wrong. Uh, but do you love me at this stage in my life? Um, I, I, I agree with you both. I, I, I can see where um, you both got your answers. But he, here's here's another question. Here's another question. Um, can you talk to our kid? Can you talk to our daughter about a grade that she got in school today? Can you talk to them about this? Now, the reason they're saying this would perturb a guy or maybe freak the guy out, and we were going to get to the to the women part as well, is because this is a implication that you wouldn't have thought to do it on your own, which in turn threatens your standing as a parent. Hmm. So can you talk to our kid about this grade? People are relatively sensitive to tones of voice. So they're saying if they hear whoever's asking this, this can be a woman as well. Uh, if the man is saying it to the woman or the woman is saying it to the man, the husband, it doesn't really matter. If they hear an inflection, a negative inflection, in this case, they're talking about the guy, this question is often delivered maybe from a frustrated parent because they're seeking the, you know, the, 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 to employ the, the, the father to do this he may get defensive. What do you guys think about that? Let's start with Mr. Elam on this one. So your wife has come to you and said, listen, here's, I need you to do this. Would you agree with this writer? Would you be uh, offended? Do you think that you would feel like she's saying that perhaps you, 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 you haven't done this and you, you were not thinking about doing it and would this threaten you in any way? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's a podcast we thought you'd like. Hi, it's Tahimia. It's Cam. Rachel. And Amani, your hostesses at The Art of Making It Work, the podcast that knows life doesn't need any help being hard, but sometimes we need a little help making it easier. On our show, we discuss an array of topics ranging from travel to friendships and even finances with a whole lot of girl chat in between. We're here to give you research-based life hacks and initiate discussions to help you and one another navigate this thing called life. So tune in to The Art of Making It Work every Monday for new episodes wherever you stream your podcast content. I'm going to be like, what? <laughs> I don't feel like I don't feel like dealing with that right now. Um, that's the that's the reaction, and let me tell you why. I say that on purpose. Um, that would be the real reaction. But um, uh, there is um, through research, one of the things that I've learned is that uh, you know the level of multitasking that women have is phenomenal versus a man. Again, I read this in this that same book of, of um, Dr. Luann Brizendine, but you know women have the ability to be multifaceted way better than men there's a book called men are, uh, men are like waffles and, and women are like spaghetti and so if you think about a plate of spaghetti right you look at one noodle and you travel down that noodle right and that noodle when you get to the end of it it's connected to another noodle and then another noodle every noodle is connected right that is the right. way that a woman's mind works and we have to think about it we we normally think that somebody else thinks the way that we think and so in order for us to improve the, 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 as we move forward inside of the relationship space, we have to understand that your spouse's or your yeah. significant other's brain does not even operate like yours. So when yeah. you're like, how did you just like women think? I think there was a meme a long time ago. It had Boris Cujo and who's the one he married to? Nicole. Uh, the, uh, Nicole yeah. And so it, it, they were in the car and above her head, she had like. 20 bubbles, like go to the store, kids, uh, dry cleaning, dinner, whatever, right? And above the guy's head, it was fitness, like workout or something. It was just one thing, right? And so that's just, you know, people look at that like, you guys don't know. Wait, listen, Mother Nature designed us like this. And so when I say that women are like spaghetti, well, then men are like waffles. Let's look at a waffle. 
and you have those little squares that are in there. Men compartmentalize things, right? So why does that matter? We do one amazing thing at a time, right? And so, lady, you're th- Giovanna might be thinking, Elon, how can you not just do multiple things because my brain can do all that? And I'm over here like, I'm dealing with the electric bill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so why do I say that? When you come to me about the grade, I'm like, Okay, well, the grade is important and my kid is important, but I might be trying to do this. So I'm on this box and now you want me to put this box down and I kind of don't even want to do that to pick up the box that you're putting in front of me. So the question and the information makes sense, right? We're talking about, you know, you know, the kid or whatever, but I might not be ready to jump into that box. Therefore, I might lash out thinking that you're just bothering me, bothering me right now. And really, we, there's just a lack of understanding of where we are. Okay. All right. That's fair. Miss Giovanna. So I think before I answer, it's always I look at the context of myself um, and I, I honestly I feel like he and I are kind of on the same page. Like if I had to ask him to speak to our daughter, for one, I've been with him 15 years. I kind of know when to ask. And I think that's one thing that a lot of women sometimes don't understand is timing, you know, and about right. when to ask certain questions and the appropriate timing and to get the attention and to get the best response. So being after 15 years, I kind of know when not to, and therefore I know when to. So I, for me, when I would ask, I mean, he'd be right there. Like that's just, we just tag team in that way, but I certainly can see how, um, and I agree women are multitaskers. I always joke and say, we can be driving the car, talking to our girlfriend, whipping somebody yeah. in the back, giving somebody the finger, <laughs> and you know, all at the same time and not miss yeah. a beat. Whereas for me, and as you said, you all tend to focus on one thing at, at a time. I always joke and tell my husband, like, I forgot you can't walk and chew gum at the same time because Real. You know, if he's if he's doing and, and he's an engineer. So even more so if if he's doing one thing and 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 I start asking a question and especially if it's a multi layered question, then I know I've lost him after the second point. So, again, just over time, I've learned how his brain operates to a certain extent. And so therefore I kind of, you know, pose my questions in in that way. But I definitely think that um, for women, I would just say it's about the timing a lot and it's about how we communicate our tone, how we ask that question. Cause yes. obviously for us as women, you know, if we put in a certain tone to it, it's going to come across completely different to a man. And it's going to be almost like an accusation, which is going to put him in a defensive posture. But I think if you just ask, you know, Hey, did you, uh, the school call today? And, uh, what do you think about us sitting down talking to her? Let me know when is a good time for you. Then I think that might be taken a little bit better than, When are you going to talk to your daughter? Because I think, again, that just automatically puts people on the defensive. And likewise, if that were a woman, I think it would put a woman on the defensive. If if the husband came in and said, when are you going to talk to our daughter or you need to talk to our daughter about her grade? I think that could put anybody on the defensive. So I just think it's how you approach it and how you deliver it that makes the difference. Okay, that's great. That's that's great advice. So it could go either way. Uh, and we're warming up, so we're going to get into uh, some really uh, significant questions here. But I'm trying to warm us up a little bit because yeah. I wanted to give. Um, I, got, I got I got something, Kelly. I want to say real quickly. Okay, I just want to echo um, Giovanna's point about the timing, and I think that that's that's where she has that she spoke wisdom there. So I want to highlight that. That's everything. So it's not that her husband doesn't have those same squares. She's right. recognized that. She's like. This is not the time, you know, instead of eight o'clock, she knows to do it at nine thirty or right, yeah. eight thirty the next day or whatever, or early in the morning before maybe the child goes back to school, or whatever. Because the, the point and the topic is important, right? Oh yeah. yeah. But just because it's their grade, we can't expect that the other person is just gonna, oh, let me drop everything and just go do this. It sounds yeah. good. Yeah. But I think that timing, that wisdom that you have there, Giovanna, that that that's so key if I just wanted to pass it, accentuate that moment that yeah. she said. Well, well, you both really hit on something. Your piece was, you know, we do not think alike and we have to be aware of that and acknowledge that. It's not like that's going to change. We have to work with that fact. 
And of course, um, Bonnie's piece, I totally agree with. But it's something else that you said that sits with me also is that you had a sense of when to do that. And that doesn't happen after right. 30, 60, 90 days of being right. someone. Yeah. You, you have a sense, oh, okay, this is not the right time to broach this subject. And so for our short timers, folks who've been in relationships for a very short time, uh, I, I think, and I want to speak for our panelists, but I would encourage you as a 25-year person to just take your lumps and move through some of these discussions because it may be uncomfortable at first, but you will get your, you will get your footing. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Miss Bonnie. You were gonna say something. I was just gonna say you'll find your rhythm. Like I didn't know this in the first, as you said, 30, 60, 90 days. It took really trial and error, but me also paying attention because I think a lot of times too, what we do as women is we don't realize sometimes that it's just about the timing and not about him not thinking it's important or him not wanting to hear from me or I'm nagging him. And it's right. really just a timing issue. Um, and so I try to educate a lot of women on that. Like sometimes you just got to be, you got to read the room, right? You got to yeah. look and know like if, if right. he's frustrated about something or he's in the middle of the game or the fight, that is not the time to go in there and no. want to have a deep discussion. Um, or if he's sleepy at night or if he's cranky or something, not good timing. And so it's not just, just that they don't want to hear it or that you're aggravating them. It's just, you didn't choose a good time to present that. So, but again, I didn't know that in the beginning. Yes, so it beginning. took me just learning and implementing what I was learning instead of using that as a um, point of contention. Well, you don't this and you don't that. No, I just looked and learned. Okay. Sure. It's not good timing. Let me adjust and work on better timing. And again, as you know, now we know each other. So I kind of know exactly when right. to go ask, but that, you know, it's still not perfect. There are times when it's still like, babe, can we talk about this later? And I'm like, okay, sure. Let me know when is a good time. And then I move on. I don't take it personally. I don't get offended. I just move on until I feel like he's ready to discuss it. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask a different question, follow it, but this this is a rich, uh, some rich soil. So th- this is what I'll say, and I'm going to ask you guys this: What role, and from a, from a man's side, or even from a woman's side with her father, what role does uh, your partner's relationship with their parent play in a question like this? Let me explain further. For me it took me a while to understand that my relationship with my mom really influenced the way that I dealt with my wife. How? Well, I grew up without a father and I heard my mom, God love her. She fussed all the time and it became unbearable. And so when I got in a relationship and a woman started to fuss or to ask me a lot of questions back to back to back. I was like, exit, please. Where is the exit? And I didn't realize why until I got older. And it was because I heard so much of that when I was coming up. I didn't want to deal with that if I didn't have to. So what are your thoughts on that? We start off with the question, but we're going a little bit deeper. And this is for folks who maybe are, are, are taking their lumps right now and they're trying to figure out how to broach their partner about things. And maybe this is a deeper way to do it. Figure out what the relationship is with with the parent. What do you think, Ms. Vani? So for me, I think I'm like a natural problem solver. Um, and so therefore... I I can honestly say I'm sure I probably fussed in the beginning, not meaning to, but just when you're not feeling heard for a woman, the tendency is just use more words. (laughs) (laughs) And and sadly, for most men, you've already kind of shut down and you're not hearing anything. And so I think for me, I figured that out. Like my goal is to be heard. My goal is to to at least get my point across, even if there was 
disagreement. And so how do I figure out the best way to do that? And if I do it fussy and he's shutting down, then I'm not meeting my goal. I'm not getting that need met. So again, I can keep running into a brick wall expecting that it will fall at some point, but I'm going to have a bloody forehead at the end of that, or I can approach that totally different. And so for me, it was, okay, Giovanna, if this isn't working, then you've got to figure out what does work. And so For my husband, again, like he's not a talker. I'm a talker. He's not a talker. On average, women talk way more than than men. And so then you add in that most teachers are women. And so men kind of have women talking at them all the time. And some and because y'all aren't big talkers anyway, you use far less words than women. I think all that talk just sound. I always say it sounds like Charlie Brown, you know, the teacher. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. a great you know, analogy. <laughs> out as want, will want. And so for me, I wanted my words to have impact. So therefore, I had to begin to choose carefully Um, and I and don't take this personally, but I also Mm -hmm. had to learn how to break things down and again, not give a bunch of instructions all together. See, for women, we understand that. If I tell a woman, okay, girl, I'm going to pick you up at eight o'clock, make sure you got your red shoes on. And then after that, we're going to go to Waffle House and don't forget to bring your crossbody bag because that, you know, remember, we're going to spend the night at Sheila's and this and this and that. A man is like, huh? So for him, I kind of have to say, hey, babe, and and say one thing at a time. And then it's like his he's able to, you know, to take that in better and act on that. But again, that was trial and error for me. So it was really just learning that. But I do think to your question, you have you can look at how somebody grew up and with their parents. Um, my husband grew up with both of his parents. I grew up without a father. So I really had to learn all this stuff. You know, my mother yeah. never remarried. And um, and so I didn't get to really see her interacting a lot with men. So for me, it was just making a lot of mistakes and then figuring out how to correct those mistakes. Like I said, I'm a problem solver by nature. So this isn't working. I have to figure out something that works better. And so for me, that's what, you know, kind of made the difference. Okay. Good, good, good feedback. Elam, I, I, I saw you just was like, you was, you were holding it. And I know you got it. <laughs> I was twitching over here. I was like, Oh my God. Good. I want to say this, man. Um, I echo everything that, um, I, I, I can call you Vonnie now. We we get friends now. <laughs> okay. Kelly, Vonnie, we good. There's Giovanna, but he's going to keep calling me Vonnie. Yeah, I'm like, I know. Vonnie, okay, we good. I echo everything that Vonnie just said, but I want to take this to a space that, you know, in my marriage, some of the things that um, I ran into um, just one day, somebody was just like, you know, Elam, you need to write a book. And I was just like, huh, write a book. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. And so, fast forward, um, one of the things that I did inside of, the, the 15 chapters that were in my book is that I address things um, from a space of because my wife did not have a father figure in her life. And so there was and so I uh, J- June 23rd makes 50 years for my parents. So, you know, I, I didn't even know when it comes to blended families or whatever case it be just just the or, and or let's just look at generational curses to whereas there was a repetitive space that existed on her side of men not being there and now here I am so how do you think that that upbringing was everybody has curses so you can't mm-hmm. even point a finger at anybody's right mine on the other side was fidelity right um so everybody has them so if you have one that's with your spouse or with yourself I always ask and I talk about this in my pre-marriage of like what exists inside of your family that there's a consistency perhaps you you have um you know whether it's men or women that are not able to communicate properly and because they then they, that means what do you think they grew up in seeing that lack thereof of communication whether it's fuss and fight and domestic violence verbal domestic violence before the physical right verbal and physical so now you have that being passed on and somebody looking at this, well, my mom cussed at my dad, so it's okay for you me to cuss at you. Yeah. So it's and so you have to that is something that that is important to look at because who do who do girls fall in love with first? Their fathers. Who do boys fall in love with first? Their mothers. So we're kind of looking at the other person of how that they conducted themselves. And so um uh you know that is something so to just to the point, it is important to know the, the level of upbringing from that person because it, it might place them in a situation where there's a pattern that might move forward. So you want to kind of move in on that and attack that and make sure that you're smoothing out those levels of communication. Cause it's not 
a question of if, but when it shows up, are you right. able to navigate your way through it? Okay. All right. That, that's rich. So I could ask you more, but I, I, I want to, because I know these other questions are going to uh, be just as fruitful. I, I, I want to get into them. So we've kind of warmed up. We're going to get into the, to the bed now. Um, <laughs> there, there, there's a, um, um, article that was uh, entitled 10 Questions Women Have Always Wanted to Ask Men and Find Out What Guys Really Think. And the first question is just that. What do men want? What do men want from women? This is a reader. Her name is Tina. She says in quotes, I'd love to know what men really want from women. She says, in bed, in life, in every day. But most importantly, she says she wants to know in in bed. So taking that cue, I want to get more serious now about what affects couples day to day emotions, vibrations, communication. We've already identified that men and women communicate differently. Women more, men less. Uh, maybe even men less effective, but I don't think because we do it less that we're, we're less effective, but maybe we are. I, I don't know. My experience is one thing. Yours could be another. I know a lot of guys, not as many girls. And so my view, unfortunately, is slanted. I'm a father of two, two girls. So when they ask me advice, I can only give them what I have. So what we're going to give you tonight, though, is the perspective both sides, because we have Miss Vonnie here with us. And these are questions I think that folks are asking all the time in their relationships. And they're probably asking you guys when they book these consultations. So, number one, why doesn't he tell me everything? <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, why doesn't he tell me everything? Um, but, so why doesn't he tell me everything? And then uh, I'm going to run and then, uh, Vani, I'll let you do your thing. Um, there's, okay, I'll say it like this. I get asked that question all the time, like, what do men want? And I don't think that there's, it, I think it would be a little unfair to give like a silver bullet of like, this is what all men want, other than the word respect. Well, well hold, um, hold on, hold on before you go down that, that path. Because mm-hmm. that was just a, a, a leader. I don't think okay. that can be answered. Right, right. And that's where I was going to go with fair and a fair. Yeah. Yeah. Is, and also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert myself here a little bit. I, I want you to, to explain, if you think it is, wh- what's the implication here? And then what would you tell? I'm your, I'm your you know, person you're consulting. And I'm asking you this as a, as a female, I'm, I've called you up and Elam, Hey, why doesn't he tell me everything? I, I mean, obviously that's a loaded question. Um, and the reason I, I think, because again, I'm not a man, so I can only give my, my female perspective, my feminine perspective. But I think the reason men don't tell women everything is because we can't handle everything. We really don't want to know everything because what we're going to do is throw that back up when it's convenient, right? It sometimes right. becomes about power and control. And so once I have this little tidbit of information, then I can use that at the appropriate time um, against him. And so again, for me, there were certain questions. I It was in the movie Love Jones, I think, when Darius said, I learned never to ask a question I didn't want the answer to. And and so I'm not saying that women should not ask certain questions, because certainly there are certain things we need to know and we need to ask those questions and be okay with the answer, whatever they are. But I just think that for women, a lot of times we say, I just want you to open up and talk to me. I just want you to be honest with me. And then when the man is honest, we didn't really want to hear that. Because right. <laughs> he says, you know, well, the sex is getting boring. What woman wants to hear that? But right. we ask the question, sweetie, is the sex still exciting for you? And if the man truly answers and says, no, actually, you know, it's kind of boring, we're going to die. And then we're going to start arguing and accusing and finger pointing and everything else. So 
Why doesn't he tell me everything? It's because honestly, we cannot handle everything. And the reality is we don't tell men everything. I mean, women, let's be honest. We are not telling everything either. And that's not to say we're lying or being deceptive or holding secrets. It's just that we don't tell each other everything. And I don't even think that we should, because if you're going to spend a lifetime with someone, you're going to get to know things over time. Like you're not going to be a couple who's been married 50 years like Elam's parents by getting there in the first year or the second year. Those relationships are built and grow over time. That intimacy grows over time. And as intimacy grows, then people begin to be more comfortable sharing things because at that point, now maybe I can handle it better because we right. built up this level of intimacy and trust and everything isn't just based anymore on looks or on, you know, some of those superficial factors that are there in the beginning. Sure. Sure. That's a good answer. Thank you, Mr. Elam. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Vani just said. And I'll add in there. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, the first thing that came up to my mind is that you can't handle the truth. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's real. I don't think that anybody should tell anybody everything because we really cannot handle everything. I just that it's like the unsexy thing to say because people are like, oh, my God, you just can't be an open book. No. OK, because um, half of the reason why is because I don't even know how I feel. So if I try to tell you everything, I'm going to stumble and fumble through that. And then that might create an either bigger bubble. But let me just go to if I had to put a silver bullet on this of, um, you know, why one of the number one reasons why that men don't even speak to, you know, and, and, and share their, their thoughts again to Vonnie's point earlier that, you know, women, you do about 20,000 words a day. We do about 5,000 words a day, right. you know, so we already don't talk that much. Now let's add a subculture that exists, um, that I was taught when I grew up. Okay. If you are a male on this planet, nine times out of 10, you were taught to don't cry like a girl. Don't share emotion. Um, you know, you got to watch how you speak, because if you speak too much of your emotions, then you're less of a man because you're not, you know, you're not supposed to feel hurt or pain or whatever case to be tough it up, go through or whatever. So we've been built for tough to that. They, they And, you know, to the defense of uh, those that have brought us along the way, um, that's to make us tough and go out here and be able to defend and do a home and secure it and all that good stuff. But in the plight of doing that, we now meet a woman and now she, we, we love her. And now we don't understand emotions because we were taught to not have them. Mm -hmm. So we have to basically, a lot of times when we get married and I will raise my hand, when I say the words feel some type of way, like that was me. Cause I was like, oh, I've never felt this before. Disappointment from this person. Cause before I would fix it a different type of way when I'm in my dating phase now mm-hmm. i'm married so like you know i gotta i gotta have my, my fidelity and my loyalty and do the right thing right so i i didn't understand that and so um you know i think that that's one of the number one reasons why uh, we could go to deception after that we can go to you know we don't even know that we don't know um after that but if i just said that there's a subculture we were literally raised as men and even those single moms i try to share with them as well they were like you know stop stop crying like a little girl like women even say it stop being so emotional you want to stop a man in his tracks tell him he's being emotional you're mm-hmm. stopping him in his tracks and then you really want him to express. So it's actually a contradiction when it's done. Yeah. And, and can I add to that too, Kelly? Because mm-hmm. I have definitely heard that from couples that I've worked with, that the man said, whenever I, I try, and with y'all, you're kind of sometimes one and done. So it's like, if I try to open up to you once and you hurt me or you make me feel, you know, too emotional right. or too sensitive, like I'm done. We could be together 50 more years and I'm done because back in 1976, you did <laughs> and, um, that's real. So that's one of the things that I've heard from a lot of the couples I've worked with from the men that, you know, when I did open up one time about something, this is what the result of that was. And so I learned like that I couldn't be my full self. And I agree with Elam, like, you know, as a society, we don't encourage men to 
have feelings to be in touch with their feelings and their emotions. And, and we do, you know, we penalize and criticize them if they do that. Even women, you know, um, Kelly, I was telling you about my son the other day who's mm-hmm. now dating and he's a great kid. He's an AB student. He's respectful. And unfortunately he tends to like the girls that are a little hood, you know, they cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and so, but and they it's adventurous. It's adventurous. Right. You know? They're not attracted to him per se, because, he's too nice he's too mannerable you know he ain't right. avoid their phone calls he's not ghosting them he's not yelling at them or calling them names or anything right. like that so it's it's like to a certain extent we as women encourage that culture in men yep. there you go. because when we get the nice guy and I've had so many women ask me Giovanna he's so nice and he's everything but I'm just not attracted to him and and yet I'm still dealing with the one over here who's got two or three women on the side Come because on, right. he's exciting you know because there's the adventure there there's a spark there's a passion and and again I was guilty of that too but when I knew that it was time for me to settle down I was like the bad boys are the ones you play with and date you don't marry because right. he's not going to automatically change at the altar and all of a sudden be this great um, spouse and partner so I think it's a lot of times that's what women do it's like we want the bad boy and then we try to turn him into this really great settled husband type and then we feel bamboozled when that doesn't work yeah and, yeah. and that, that nurturing factor that you have in you actually works negatively for you because you're like, this is a, you know, women like projects, you know. So and, and there are some men that do, too. So let me just be clear about that. You know, so, so there's Captain Save them. We, we do exist. <laughs> Captain Save them exists out there. Right. But for women, it's like, well, you know, he would be amazing if he could just. Mm-hmm. And you go for that just just to try to bring it out, and then you become disappointed when it doesn't come out. So um, yeah. we just have to be cautious of how we're raising even our children today. Um, and we can raise them with strength, but then them also have emotion. We mm-hmm. can raise them with 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 um, intellect and, and wisdom, but then also encourage them to go see the vines of the world. Counseling in our culture, come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's literally weaponized right now. Mm-hmm. You you could hear some people arguing and they're just like you need to be in counseling and I, I i'm like every time i'm like that should be just like breathing air you know I'm like what's wrong with being in counseling why we shouldn't be weaponizing something that actually helps us to improve and unpack some of the things that we might be walking through so we just have to be cautious of the words that we're used while we're trying to bring strength to our children that we're right. not you know diminishing some of the things that they really need to participate in yeah, thank you guys both for for that detail. I, I think too, this is a good point to remind the listeners: if these are questions that you have had in the past and they didn't go well for you, or you have now, and you hear the suggestions from our panelists about how to uh, approach it and maybe some origins, etc. Hopefully, this can work for you. But I think it's notwithstanding some deception because that's, that's kind of, we're not dealing with that here. This isn't, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, e channel, you know, show what we want to do is provide you and empower you with information that's going to help you. So we're not talking about deception. What we're talking about is this person is not being completely uh, honest with you about everything. Not to hurt you, not anything malicious. And so for me, in 25 years, having been the man in this relationship, I agree with what both of you guys have said, particularly you, Vani, in that I have shared with my wife some things because, you know, she said, hey, I feel like you don't tell me anything. And then I did tell her. And the reaction I got was like, yeah, that ain't even the whole thing. And you freaking out. So I'll, I'm just going to have to do this. And and I come from a background of, you know, I did, didn't have a dad growing up and so forth. So a lot of times I was just used to doing stuff on my own. I didn't have to tell anybody. I didn't I didn't feel like anybody needed to really know. And but I know in my case, I know in my case that um, I'm not doing anything malicious or dis- or deceitful. And really, from my standpoint, I kind of see it as protection. And many times in the frat, when we are with brothers, we are there to share information that we cannot share anywhere else. Right. Particularly in our relationships. Mm. We always know the kids have the parents to stand on the mom to fall, to lean up against. And mom has dad to lean up against so many times in our families, 
there's no one for us to lean up against. There's no wall on the other side of us. And if we start tumbling, I'm going to tell you, like you said before, Bonnie, you may think you want to know, but to know that your man is afraid of something, that's not really going to make you feel comfortable. Nope. I got to be honest with you. That is not, it's not going to make you feel comfortable. So, um, but anyway, I said I wasn't going to interject, but I really appreciate no, the that. Was good. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Why, why do I always have to initiate sex? Why? Who's asking that question? Good question. Oh. <laughs> why? I can tell you from my perspective, I feel like I'm going to get more questions like this if I was a therapist for men. Um, one of the shows that we did early on was uh, similar to, you know, what do men want? And one of the Harvard.edu uh, posts that we, we took this from, it was a question that was, that was given to folks in, in marriages for 40 years plus. And one of the questions that pretty much every man asked was, well, this is the way they presented it. It wasn't why do I always have to initiate it? They said one of the things that they would like is if their spouse initiated sex more. And after you guys respond, I'll tell you why they said that. But this is a question. I'm coming to you as a a consult, uh, and I'm saying, listen, why do I always have to initiate it? Let's start with uh, Ms. Fonnie. Oh, okay. I just knew you were going to Elam. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I was about to go in, but if you want to prepare your answer, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so I, a man is asking me this question because I don't get this asked about a lot from a lot of women. But actually, I have had some women ask this question. Um, but I, I think that it, it's important for both people in a relationship to feel wanted. Uh, I I think that men are no different in that aspect, that you all want to feel wanted just like a woman wants to feel wanted. And so having someone initiate kind of sends that signal to your brain that I'm desired, I'm wanted, I'm attractive to this person. So honestly, I definitely think it should not be all one partner versus the other. There are people that are just more, to me, sexually assertive than other people are. And some of that's just upbringing and background. I think some of that's societal because societally, you know, women are considered a whore. Women are considered a slut. A man might be like, girl, how you learn to do that? Or uh, who who else you gave a blowjob to that you so good at it? So to some extent, women may decide to hold back just because of that thought that men want to be in control, that they want to be dominant, that they want to feel like they're teaching the woman everything, that she's the first, that he has, you know, that he's the one that he, she has experienced things with when that may not be the case. Let's just be honest. And so I think to, to that point, um, again, you just have people that are more sexually assertive. But I also think sometimes in a woman's mind is how much do I initiate? Because I don't want to be seen as a freak. I, I'm his wife. Now, if I'm the girlfriend, I don't care. We, we can go at it. But if, if I'm the wife, there's almost this certain mindset that I'm supposed to have. You know, I'm supposed to be his queen. I'm supposed to be on a pedestal. So therefore, I can't get too, too freaky, you know. And, and so I think from a woman's perspective, sometimes it's that. And then again, I just think from a male or from both perspectives, I I think we all want to feel wanted, you know, and we Mm -hmm. want to feel like that other person desires us and that we're not always the one, you know, making the, um, having the initiation. Okay. All right. Um, I think the the first part that uh, man, I, I do share this with with uh, young men in particular. But first, we have to understand that the the, the sexual organs, right? Um, without going into too much of health class, but let's just look at it as when you hear um, sometimes you hear ladies like, "Why is he always thinking about sex?" Whatever the case may be, and I start telling men, "Listen, if you read the male brain, you would understand and be able to boldly say it's because that's the way I was made." Okay. Our sexual organs are like what, ten times the, the size. You know, this is biological. Now we have none to do. This is not even about desires and wants. We're saying we have to understand your brain really runs the show, mm-hmm. right? And if and if you don't understand your biology, it will become your destiny. 
Right. And so we have to off the top that our sexual organs, we're out here to try to procreate. Just like I said in the, before, that women are out here to select. But we're out here literally as men to procreate. Um, and so with that being said, is there a harness that we need to put on it? Is there discipline that we need to walk in? Yes. But understand that this is a natural reaction from us. Right. If this is the way that we want to naturally go. It's not always as. Um, and we're, we're talking about obviously two consenting adults, right? That people who know each other, not anything from an aggressive perspective, but just, you know, this is the thought process that we have. And we, and it's normally shamed to the point where, you know, some men are just like, oh my God, why am I thinking about sex so much or whatever? Um, and so that would be the first thing is that it's, it's biological. The second thing is that some of us, and I'll just go into the spouse space. We won't even deal with the girlfriend space. We're just going to say from a spouse perspective, those of you who are believers, of course, it does talk about how the bedroom is undefiled. So, um, I reject anybody who's saying that, you know, Hey, you don't want to be a freak. No, go on and be a, be a freak for that person because you have to understand the assignment for that person. And I think that that's sometimes that that's what we don't do. We don't understand the assignment for that person. Is every man a physical touch person? No. I I have guy friends who are just like, yo, I'm okay with like, you know, once a week. And I'm looking at him like, huh? Like, no, no. Why? Because I'm a physical touch person. Who is this person? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Huh? Right. But but, um, you know, but there are some that um, that are in that space. And so you have to understand the assignment for that person. For the person that you choose, you have to understand what is the sexual quotient for that person. He, if he says five times, you're you're down with two times. Maybe y'all will land at three times. This is where the collaboration comes from, right? right? You might not get the exact number that you're looking for. Somebody's going to have to go up. Somebody's going to come down. But you have to understand the assignment. And that's why when I start hearing women... I, I love to be in groups with, uh, with women to just sit there and listen to them. They're just like, girl, you got to train him. Let me tell you something that you don't want to do. Don't think you're tr- you're trying to train a brain that that you you can't do. You don't have that power of just getting him to a point where because here's the thing: what normally ends up happening, the brain is 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 um, positioned to want to resist pain. There is a pain, and there's a whole chapter I talk about in my first book um, of understanding a man: sexual rejection and how do men really feel about it. In that chapter. A hundred percent of the men that were single, meaning unmarried, had no idea what I was talking about. They had no idea. They didn't even understand it. It was just like, what do you mean rejection outside of maybe her cycle or maybe she's like really, 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 really tired, really, really. And like throw some more reallys on there. Then I don't I might know. But they had no idea. But the married men use phrases like disappointed, rejected, mm-hmm. angry, um, You know, some of them, you know, close to tears because they're just like, I don't understand. I desire this person and I'm not getting, you know, that initiation from them. So you have to understand the assignment for that person and be able to have that mature conversation and make sure that you're qualifying. There's kind of like an ongoing qualification that some of us need to think about. Even though you are married, it's almost like recertification. Right. You know, so that you so that by the time that you get to um, get to Giovanna, uh, excuse me, get to Vani, right, Vani, we, we, we cool. Get to Vani. You um, you uh, are not having that as maybe like the 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 space that you have so much contention in because you're trying to resist them versus trying to embrace what the assignment is for that person. Mm-hmm. OK, I, I accept what both you guys have said, and that's a lot of good information. So let's take it a step further. We're in it now. This is not a relationship in terms of dating. This we're married. Is this enough to to dissolve a marriage? Is this enough? So I've been in this 25 years. And of course, this conversation has come up. I think if you've been in it two years or a year, if your guy is is come up because usually not always. Usually it's the guy wondering, you know, uh, like Elam said, it's usually five times a week. Now I'm down to two and that two ain't going to happen unless I make it happen. So this is not what I, I, I came here for. What does a person do? I mean, what is it to do? If if we're coming to you guys as counselors, say, listen, I've been here 10 years. I, I, I don't think it's justified for me to leave this relationship over this, but I also feel like. I resent this person or like you was saying, I I feel some discontentment because I'm not satisfied here. And I feel like at some point 
um, I may leave. So is there something to do when when these don't match up? Is there something that can be done? Um, what advice do you give when these uh, libidos don't match up and you're in it 10, 15, 20 years? Mr. Elam, you want to take it first? I was going to say, yeah. I knew that was you first, Elam. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so I say like this, and, and I have had people to come to me with, with this particular question. And so what I do first is I break down the mechanics of it. So I try to make sure that it's understood. As you can see, that I'm even doing that inside of our conversation. This is the way the brain works for this person, right? And so I, I take the trip down the love language. I, I have people go, you know, take the love language quiz. Okay. So now at this point, now you see you take the quiz, he take the quiz. Okay. Now. Let's just say that his is, you know, physical touch is his number one one. So I'm, I say to her, I'm just like, we're, you're talking about baseline. It's like building a house, right? Your people don't just put the, the walls on, on the grass, right? They put that concrete slab first so that you can build on something, right? And so we're talking about outside of spirituality, outside of that is, is, is love. And so if this person is built biologically, this, this is the way this person's brain is wired for that physical touch, you now have to understand that this is the way this person is. Now, after that, I then unpack the pieces of, okay, well, what does it look like for you, sex quotient wise, sir? Okay, you say three times, okay, ma'am, are you signing up for this? Because this is who he is. And I remember, then, we're in this 15 years now. Yeah, I know, but watch it, watch it. I'm so glad that you said that because I was about to go there because sometimes people's love languages change, right? Every 10 to 15 years, your love language can change. So in the beginning, Michelle might have been a quality time, right? Um, you know, and stuff like, excuse me, uh, gifts. Later on, it shifted to quality time. And so it was, it, so you have to, this is where you have people that say, oh, we grew apart and stuff like that. No, you stopped paying attention to who the person was and you did not want to evolve with that person, right? So at the end of the day, this is where I go back to, there's a requalification that happens. And that's why I ask couples to take the love language quiz yearly. Just something simple as taking this 15 minutes to understand this is what I need. This is what I need, not what I want, because it's looked upon sometimes as just a want, just two bodies coming together and keep it moving. No, that's a that as a as a love language um, quality time person. That is my regeneration. That is how I go back out here and fight the lions and the tigers and the bears because you are my octane. And so once you understand the the level of importance of that, then there kinds of be. There tends to be more of a blend of okay, I just thought he just wanted it because he just wanted to get his rocks off versus. He's plugging into you as the only resource that allows him to feel this type of love and then go out there and be as great as you as you want him to be. So I think it's really a lot of times of just understanding what that. But that's that's the space that I walk in when couples come to me with that. OK. All right. Miss Bonnie. So I think that, um, you know, I do something very similar when I'm working with a couple as trying to see, you know, how they went into it, even though I know you're saying we're 15 years down the line, but a lot of us go into relationships with unrealistic expectations, mm. go to, into them not being completely honest. We might mm-hmm. say, I'm cool and I got a high sex drive, but, you know, five years in, we're feeling like, oh, well, now you should just love me because I'm there for you. And, right. and so sometimes people are wanting to hold you to that. Like, no, when we got together, I told you that this is what I needed to feel satisfied or, you know, to feel loved and desired. So I think a lot of it is just because we are not always honest and upfront. Once attraction takes hold, we just want to be with that person and we're willing to, you know, shave a couple off our number or whatever, just to kind of try to make that work. And then 15 years down the line, you you know, that truth is coming to the surface. And um, so I, I definitely think um, intimacy, sex is important. I, I feel like, you know, I always joke with my couples and I say, um, sure, we're supposed to pro- procreate, but there's a reason God made it feel good. Right. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, because he could have had us bump elbows to procreate. And so there's a reason why there's all kind of sensors and erroneous zones in that area it, to feel good because he wanted us to desire to have that closeness and that connection with one another. And, and so I think 
though, that some of this, you know, when we think about it historically, women and men have been pitted against one another so much. The battle of the sexes, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Like there, there's almost, almost been this, um, people have profited, you know, off mm-hmm. of the problems between men and women, the disconnect. You know, Elam spoke in the beginning about how, you know, the way that we save our communities is by saving our families. But the way that we save and build our families is it starts with mom and dad. Well, guess what? Traditionally, we haven't held a high regard for marriage. We haven't right. held a high regard for a strong, healthy relationship. We laugh about it. You know, we have satire about it and jokes right. about it and comedians do routines about you know men and women being against one another and so with women a lot of times the thinking is oh girl he just wants some and you know he didn't even um uh, cut the grass last week and then he come in wanting some and so then we look at withholding as a as a form of punishment um right. or you know for the men it's like well she ain't giving me none so i think i feel justified you know to go on out here and, and do whatever or i feel justified not giving her what it is that she wants. You know, if she wants a back rub, then I'm not giving that because I'm not getting sex. And so again, it just pits us against one another as opponents, right. as adversaries instead of allies. And I think when you realize that sex is meant to be a form of connection, you know, right. when you get married back in the old days, you weren't even legally married until you had consummated. So the right. marriage wasn't even considered le- legal until there was consummation. And so therefore, this is an important part of a relationship and how people come together and connect. I joke with a lot of women that tell me, girl, I I don't really have to have it too often. And I'm like, child, that's the best stress reliever. And that's why you walking around. High blood pressure. (laughs) That's why you walking around (laughs) uptight and irritable and mad at the world. You better go somewhere and release some pressure. And Mm -hmm. and I say it as a joke, but in reality, you know, I I mean it. Like a lot of us as women, we see it as just something men want and that we got to oblige every now and then once we've been married now when we were single and doing our thing marriage was I mean sex was the greatest thing on earth but now that we're married and we've had children and you know our children are growing our bodies are changing we almost start looking at sex as the enemy and the man wanting it as the enemy and so getting women to understand that you know as Elam has said that this is biological it's a natural part of life you know I have couples that when I'm working to help them reunite, I'll say, you know, when you go to bed at night, do you touch each other in the bed? I'm not even talking about sex. Do do you touch a hand to a leg or leg to leg or something like that? And so many couples don't. And so you're not even having intimacy in those small ways. How are you right. going to end up having sex? And when you do, you feel like you're just fulfilling a quota. Well, he said three times a week. Right, right. Knock out this three times, you know. Right, right. Day. I'm thinking about, you know, the haves and the haves yeah. not saying really into it. And <laughs> right. so, you know, and part of that, of course, is me and knowing that we're like ovens and you got to heat it up and you start, right. you know, you start prepping for sex in the morning, you know, text me during the day and say, girl, you looking good when you walked out this morning. Now my mind is already thinking, well, you might get some tonight, you know, or, or you come in and you've cooked or when I get home, you've already helped the kids with homework or whatever. All those things matter to a woman as far as sex. But like I tell women, men wake up, it's Wednesday. We doing it? You know, like they don't yeah. need all those precursors. But I just think we have to change some of the mindsets and the attitudes around what sex is inside of marriage. Um, yeah. And especially when people are Christian, like I said, for a lot of women, it's almost like I can't go there, girl, you know, be- because they feel like they're somehow stepping outside of God's will yeah. you know, to, to, to be uh, uninhibited with their spouses when, you know, like you said, if, you, if you're going to have some freaky sex, have it inside your marriage. <laughs> right, right. Yes, sir. I mean, well, Hebrews said it all. So if they if they are, you know, of the church, they can read Hebrews 13, 4. I started pulling up stuff right while you was talking, Bonnie, because I'm like, OK, for my church folk, Hebrews 13, 4. But here's the thing. Another uh, space that just I want to highlight is that it should not, in my opinion, have to be just it's not just the responsibility of the man to get um, excuse me, of the husband to get the wife in the mood. It's also the responsibility of the of the wife to get in the mood. So, yes, I know what I might desire. So I need to grease the skids, if you will. Right. Whether it's texting, whether it's 
whatever case may be. But then also, I think it's important, and this is where I guess the question comes up from men of that. Well, it's like, you know, okay, when I was dating, I'm seeking, 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 trying to do what I got to do to get it, right? But if I'm married, do I really need to keep always creating that moment? Is there a space that the wife can come forward and create that moment as well? Because our bodies belong to each other, right? Yeah. And so, you know, that's just the only space that I know sometimes men bring up. Well, I'm I'm laughing because you both kind of jarred some memories. I mean, it was several years ago. I won't mention who I was talking to. But I was talking to this lady, a friend of mine, and she almost said word for word, Bonnie, what you were saying about cutting the grass. And if he does this, then I may give him some. And I said, what what are you right. giving him? Right. What, what exactly are you giving him That's word. that he's not giving you? So I, I have, not now, but I, I have had strong issue with this ownership of sex. Now, of course, we own our, our, own our bodies. No one's talking about, you know, forcing themselves. That's not what I'm talking about. But the attitude of this will happen when I when I say in a marriage it it's um it's one of those things I think if it's not handled correctly it it goes you're, you hey, listen I'm a gardener I grow tomatoes a lot of tomatoes and if you know anything about tomatoes especially bigger tomatoes beefsteak mm-hmm. tomatoes they grow vines like crazy Right. But you don't want them to do that because it, it's going to stress out the plant because every vine is not going to produce a fruit. So you have to prune it. Otherwise, it's going to go crazy. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to grow. And what I told this lady was. He, he's going to eat. The, the, the issue is, is he going to eat at your table? Mm-hmm. You said something before, Elam, about training someone, I, I, whether it's woman to a man or man to a woman. This this idea of ownership of this particular piece of the relationship, and we're talking marriage, because it's so critical, so important, it's going to go in other directions if it's not handled. That's just my two cents from being married 25 years. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say, and I'll, I'll let you um, close out if we go to before we go to the next question, is I believe that it can be. Bonnie said it first, and I think that's the key. Really, a lot of times with guys, it really the actual act in itself is not really what we're going for, although we're never going to turn it down. It's just we want to feel. Listen, if I know 10 dudes and and listen, I know a lot of I have friends who are gay, I have family members who are gay. I'm not talking about a homosexual relationship. I'm talking about a male uh, female relationship. If I ask 10 guys, I don't care whether they have flu whether they're on their way to work, if there's any way that they could have sex, yes, sir. they would do it. If there's yes, any way. Yes, sir. <laughs> so nobody's turned it down. So I nobody's confused that men want women. This, this, this is not a, it's, it's not a contest, but nobody's confused. The, the issue comes in where maybe the guy says to himself one day, if I don't initiate this, how long would this go? How, how, like literally, how long would we go? I have a friend. I, I kid you not. He told me this. I almost drove outside the road. I don't have any reason to believe that he would lie. I mean, he didn't have anything to gain by sharing this. Certainly. 11 months is what he told me. He said 11 months. And, no, and, I, and I, 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 I wasn't intimate with my wife for 11 months. So what that says to me as a man is that somebody else is in the picture. Uh, there's no communication because I don't know what we're talking about. If, if, if nothing is good, nothing is ha- like what is what is happening? So I bring this up in this kind of convoluted way to present how it can get sticky in the relationship when something like this gets off track, it can it can be a small thing or it can go out like that tomato branch and and you lose control of it because it started off, you know, a, a small thing. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm 
No, it makes sense to me, but I'll give Vani a chance to, to echo that if if she has any thoughts. Because um, I can go for the next hour on this, so I do. <laughs> the only reason why, because men bring it to me all the time, so I'm just like, but I know, Vani, you get this thrown at you as well, so. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, again. 11 it, months is not it, natural. It, I think it can. Um, I've heard it. I, I, that's, I didn't flinch when you said it. Um, I've had couples where it's been over a year. So 11 months, I'm like, okay, I've heard it. And uh, But I think, like you said, I think it's like people get in a rut. And certainly yeah. not allowing for things like illness sometimes because right. I've had clients where somebody's had an illness and so they just haven't been physically able. Yeah, we, we, we're gonna, we, we'll let them have a pass. Yeah. But I, I wanted you to speak to the, to, the, to the ownership. And I just don't want to pin it on the ladies, but a lot of times with this, okay. I, I will give him some that okay. still to some degree kind of irks me when I hear grown mm-hmm. people say that mm-hmm. it, it's an indication to me that they are still relatively unconscious as it relates to men and how that works. Because I know some men, if you say that to them, number one, it's a turn off mm-hmm. and number two, they will never tell you this, but they will, they will prove to themselves that, they don't have to have you in order to eat. Let's just put it that way. And you don't want to get yourself in that. So I wanted you to speak to the idea of the ownership. So for example, if, if my wife rolls over in the middle of the night, it'd be three o'clock in the morning. It's happened plenty of times. It's going down. If I roll over it, chances are it, it, de- it depends. It, it, it depends what kind of day she had. It was, she, was she completely asleep? Do a leg hurt? What, you know what I'm saying? So, sometimes it may feel like you can have it on demand and I'm just kind of chilling, waiting to see if you're good to go. Yeah. So I'm going to go back a little bit because again, I think we've been throwing biology around a lot and I want to be clear that I also (laughs) advocate for a woman's biology. So our biology does change over time, especially after childbirth. You know, for a lot of us, once those hormones kick in and again, just that act of childbirth for a lot of women, and I've heard this so many times, they truly have no desire. And Mm -hmm. it's tough to get in the mood or initiate when you really don't have the the, the mental or physical desire. So you feel as if you're just doing it out of obligation or, or kind of going with the motion and, um, and, you know, or women who are going through menopause, unfortunately, we don't, as women don't have the luxury of just having our biology work, you know, with, without our mental input. Uh, so much of that for us is tied to how we feel, to our emotions, to whether we feel attractive. I have women that will say that, you know, they, they've gained weight. And so it's not that they don't desire their husband. They don't feel attractive in and of themselves. And so they're feeling like, girl, I just, I don't feel attractive. I don't want to take my clothes off. I know he's probably looking at me like she's gained 50 pounds since we got married. And so for a woman, once we get in our heads in that way, that Mm. completely shuts down libido that shuts down the sexual urge um and and again i hear this so often so i will suggest things to women like natural supplements maca and different things like that that are known to you know um uh, revive you know the the Mm -hmm. sexual urges but for a lot of women it's not just that i don't want you now some women again will, will play those head games well if you cut the grass i might give you some um but for some women they might truly desire you but i don't have any physical feeling of that and because i really want to have that physical feeling i just try to avoid it because sometimes you all can tell you can say you are really not into it are you or you know you just seem like you want to hurry up and get it over with because you can tell that the passion for her is just not there right. and, and so again sometimes it's not that i don't desire you i still love you i'm still attracted i want to please you but my body is turned completely off and so mm-hmm. how do I how do I create that or manufacture that or fake that to please you or to for us to come together and have that old spark when I'm not feeling a spark? Mm-hmm. And so again, I don't think it becomes an excuse or a you know a cop out for a woman to just be like, Well, I don't I don't have any urge, so I don't have to do anything. I think 
as women and being in a relationship and having certain expectations, it's our responsibility. Then let me go meet with my doctor. Let me see what are some things that I can do. Let me, you know, exercise helps create sexual yeah. So yes. let me start exercising. Let me start running or something like that, because this is important to me. It's important to him and it's important to our marriage. And so, I, but again, I think it also, Kelly, goes back to women and men have been pitted against each other so mm. much, especially in the black community. When you think about the music and the songs and the music. Oh, yeah. It's almost like I'm going to get her before she get me or I'm going to get him before he gets right. me. And, and so when women get married, when those women get married, they're bringing that into the marriage. Girl, if he buy me True. this bag, he'll get some. You know, because they do feel like that's their power. This is the only power. This is the only bargaining tool I have. This is mm. the only leverage I have. Otherwise, that's dangerous. Yeah. Otherwise, he's just going to, you know, whatever, not pay me any attention. And so the only time he pays me attention is during sex. Then I'm not giving him sex because I also need him to spend quality time with me and just watch a movie. So I think there are just so many factors that go into that, that mm-hmm. it's hard to just look at it from one aspect and say, yeah. women, y'all, that's wrong. Because I think you've got to hear from some of the women as well. Again, I don't think it's a cop out or an excuse, but it certainly can be an explanation. No, And so Kelly, you guys probably saw me both. And Vani, you touched on something that's just so strong in the very first couple of sentences that you were talking about, about the trend, you know, the transitions of, of a woman in her body. And you, you guys probably, those of you who are watching, you saw me kind of get up. I wanted to run and get this book right here. Okay. It's called the upgrade. Right. And so that's by um, Dr. Lil Wayne Brizendine. And so she, in that, in that book, she's talking, you see how the female brain, grow stronger and better in midlife and beyond. So what she does is she takes the woman's body between 35 and 65. And there is so much education that we don't have men. There's so much education that women don't have just about their bodies and what they're going through before menopause, during menopause, and afterwards. What their brains are literally going through, how they're unable to really communicate certain things because they don't feel like the us as men understand it. And so in this book, she's basically talking about some of the things that you go through, some of the things you're feeling and how and how it's natural and how we have to have an understanding of it. Whereas men, ultimately, we feel like we're being rejected. Where a lot of times it's men, we have to understand that they're going through something that we don't even understand, whether it's the hot flashes, whether it's the night sweats, whether it's the anxiety, whether it's the uh, whether it's the, you know, just the spikes in the in, in their in, in their blood pressure or whatever. So what they used to know of the body and the hot body or whatever case may be, that thing is now transitioning. Right. And so we as men, we're like, you ready? And she's like, ah. I don't even understand what's going on. And so we're like, oh, you don't want me, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a high level of communication that needs to exist in that space. So I purposely wanted to get this and bring this up because this is education that, in my opinion, that can save some people's marriages, um, right. the, the upgrade, but it basically talks about, that's a big span, 35 to 65 of how a woman's body is transitioning. Well, that's marriage time. Right. And so uh, uh, there's just an understanding that we have to have on both sides. So it's a little bit deeper. Sometimes men, I will say, and in the defense of women, it's a little bit deeper sometimes of just she doesn't want you. No, she's going through something. She doesn't understand it. And then you don't understand it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what my takeaway is the communication can be the key to the solution. Mm -hmm. And if you are feeling rejected, are angry or uh, unsatisfied, you need to find a way to delicately communicate that. Uh, if you're feeling uh, as a woman, I'm, I'm not prepared, I don't feel comfortable, then let's communicate that. I think the brush off without any discussion leaves True. us both in our yes, heads sir. and it creates additional issues because right. men will feel a certain way and a woman will feel a certain way. And I don't want to get too much deeper in it because we have one more question, but I, I know so many folks, well, not so many of the folks that I do know, this has come up every time. I'm telling you, if I, yeah. if, if I know five guys 
I'm telling you whether they're telling their wives or not. <laughs> and these guys are not people who run the street and want to have outside relationships. But they have said to me on more than one occasion, this is, this is not what I signed up for. Agreed. This is not what I signed up for. And it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem this, that, and the other. So um, you can talk this piece to death, but for the folks that are listening, just know that communication really is uh, the key to this solution. So every can I, can I, can I ask 30 seconds really quickly to Vani? Okay, yeah. She had to give us some level of education in this area because we don't, we're over here super ignorant about it. Cause as I read this, I was just like, Oh my God, that's, I, I know, you know, just being in that space sometimes. Vani, what's a certain way that maybe we could think in that space? And I'm sorry, Kelly, I just, no, I you want to add that. That just jumped into my head. What, Vani, how could we think about this better if you had to just speak to the men quickly? Uh, I I think what Kelly said, I think it's about communication on both sides for the men. Use your words. And again, that's not always easy for you all because you've kind of been told to just shut down. So use your words, but not to argue with her or to, you know, I don't ever get none. And this ain't what I signed up for, which is only going to further put her Mm -hmm. on the defense, which is only further going to make her emotionally shut down. So instead of that, say, baby, I just miss you. I desire you. Man, do you remember when we first got together and we would sneak in your mama's whatever and we would do it and blah, blah, blah. See, now you're playing to my emotional brain and you're taking me back there, which ho- hopefully will start to, you know, revive some of those natural urges and that natural desire. But I think for the men not to just automatically think it's because she's rejecting you, because I have heard from too many women that I want to do it. I wish but the desire just isn't there. So that's why I say I recommend like, well, go see your gynecologist, see what they can do from a hormonal perspective. You know, if you're depressed or you're going through mood swings, you know, maybe look at taking something in that area. So often, like I said, I think we know marriage is supposed to be forever. So we just start taking each other for granted. And we just assume that, you know what, he signed up for me for life or she signed on for life. So they just got to go through this and be with me better for worse, richer or poor sickness and in health. And so we think that's just an automatic default thing, forgetting that it still takes work, you know, to keep the the fire lit and to keep the fire burning. But I would just say, men, it is not always personal. It is not. And sometimes the rejection isn't you. It's me. See, because I don't like this extra 30 pounds. I don't Mm -hmm. like the belly. I don't like the stretch marks. I don't like that my boobs are sagging and they used to sit up and say hello. And so it's not you I'm rejecting. I don't feel good about me. And because we, again, are so emotional as women, once I get locked in my head with that thing and locked in the emotion, that just kind of trumps everything else. So have those conversations Say to her, baby, I'm feeling like you don't desire me. Is that what it is? Just ask the question. I think sometimes we're both so afraid of being vulnerable to the other right. that again, right. we just pick a darn fight or or we talk about something that really ain't got nothing to do with it when I really just want to say, man, I really miss you. Like, man, uh, you know, or whatever mm-hmm. it is that you want to communicate to her. Just say what it is you're feeling and then yeah. listen to what she has to say. You know, we're going to circle back. Um, because I, I think we probably could do a whole podcast just, just on this because it's got a lot of legs. The thing is, you know, we live in a society, especially now. When I was a kid, I, I don't know, if somebody had a, a, a magazine, you were good to see a naked lady. But now there's so much porn and so much distortion of what relationships are that guys take a lot of that into the bedroom. And if their wives, a lot of times, are not replicating what they see, what they see on TV even, they're like, uh, did I get a dud or what, what's, what's really happening? I got to, you know, I've signed up for this for life. So we're not going to, um, here's two things I'll tell you. Number one, we're going to come back and we're going to extend this. But number two, that energy that you're feeling, a lot of times it's best that you hold on to it, man. So we're going to talk about the power spiritually of semen retention and what the ancients knew that we don't know because we spend so much time watching porn and masturbating that we have no personal power because we release it and we let it go so often that we can't move the mountains uh, that the teacher talked about. This is going to be the last question, guys, and we're going to call it a podcast. Um, 
my girlfriend, my spouse, my partner, my husband is very clutchy with their phone. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Very clutchy (laughs) with their phone. That makes me suspicious. We're living a day and age, guys, where I don't know. I don't know if there's a relationship out there that at some point hasn't come under that. um, Who's that? Why are they texting you? Why? Who is that calling? And and, 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 that makes me feel uncomfortable. I would think at this point, guys, living in the digital age, that you guys have heard this more than once in a counseling session. He, she, they are too clutchy with this phone. It makes me feel uncomfortable. What to do? Let's start with uh, Miss Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, I love to throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, okay, I, I start. I start. Miss, no, no, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, because mine is kind of short. Um, because okay. really, it is a combination of two things. It could be the insecurity on whoever the other party is first, right? Because, you know, obviously we are uh, a victim of circumstances to whereas maybe some things that we happened in the past and then we see some triggers and some duplication. So we're just kind of like, you know, uh, let's just say for women, for men, right? Okay, so you've been cheated on, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so can I see your phone? Can I this, can I that? <clears throat> and so I understand. So we first we have to unpack that. But what I would like to just take a moment to just say, I'm going to give this feedback to the ladies, regardless of whether he is or is not doing anything. Understand that a man is territorial by nature, right? Mm -hmm. And your phone next to your house (laughs) and your car is like, you know, one of the bigger things, right? So uh, there's a level of stubbornness that can exist there. Not that I'm not doing anything. I just don't want to feel like that I'm giving up all of myself or, you know, that I'm releasing my territory to you. You might be looking at it because, you might have some some triggers from the past. So I would just say that that's a really a case by case basis. Normally, I end up unpacking that for my clients of just saying, OK, well, where is this going? Um, what have you dealt with? You know, did he was he unfaithful to you in the past? OK, he wasn't. OK, well, where is this coming from you from your past or whatever? And then normally as we unpack it, we're able to see where it really comes from. But that's really there's not a blanket statement in there. Um, But I would say that it's a combination of insecurities. It's a combination of territorial. And I I, I mean, if this is your stuff, this is your stuff. So it's 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 there's such a I could go. That's like a whole anything for the person to do. Is it is there any action to take or is this just a self evaluation? It is a it is a self and a collective evaluation. So I would say that it's both. Um, and, and again, we have to look at what your non-negotiables are. If this is something that you just have to have access to or whatever, it's so it, it it's, it's a rabbit hole. So that's why it's hard to really go, but I'm gonna throw that, Ronnie, I'm gonna throw that over to you. Cause that's a whole rabbit hole. right there. <laughs> I, ca- I caught it. Uh, I definitely agree. I think a lot of times it's insecurities and it can be based on past experience. Have that couple dealt with infidelity already? Um, and so, yes, when I see that, you know, someone is preoccupied with their phone or their computer or whatever it is, then it's, it may lead my mind to wander. Uh, I, that's one of those areas I try not to touch. I, I just, <laughs> it goes back. And that's to, where I was with it. So you don't so ask, <laughs> don't ask a question you don't want the answer to. So, <laughs> You know, it, the the phone could be laying right there. I mean, and unless I just happen to look over and see you mama calling and I know you've been waiting on that call, I, I just don't let myself go down that because I think, you know, it does become a rabbit hole and, and, and then it leads you down further because it, it could be that his cousin sent him a picture and, and you just look at it and don't know this cousin or whatever. So it's just, that just opens up so many doors and 
I always tell women, like, don't hurt yourself, you know, by going and looking and searching for stuff because you get hurt in the end because you may see something you just don't like or don't understand. You know, sometimes people can have conversations that are just meant for their boys. They're they're, I'm not cheating. I'm not so and so. But just from the boys, I might say, hey, did you see Cheryl the other day? Oh, and all of a sudden, you who is Cheryl and why are you talking about Cheryl to to Kelly or whatever? Mm -hmm. When it was really just a guy conversation and women do it too. We're out to eat and we're like, girl, you see the waiter? But that's not meant for my husband to know that I said that. That's not mm-hmm. meant for him to see that or whatever. And then start feeling like, oh, you was trying to go home with the waiter? No, it was just girl talk. And so mm-hmm. I wasn't going to act on it. It didn't go any further. So I just, certain things, we just got to stay out of the, the weeds. You know, don't willingly just run into the, the briar patch or whatever, because you're going to get scratched. And so again, you know, if and if you got to keep doing that so much, to me, there's a bigger problem in the relationship. Amen. Yep. If you got to continually check phones and emails and break passcodes and Facebook and Messenger. and hired detective. Like, I don't have the time for all of that. And and for me, if I've got to do all that, that's already signaling that there's a right. problem in the relationship yeah. that needs to be addressed. And so, whatever answer you give me about the phone, if we've got deeper problems, that's not going to solve it. So, you know, right. again, I just say, uh, it is the information age, the digital age, all of that, and there are so many ways to do stuff and do dirt. Ah, uh, that part right there. Uh, That's what I try to tell people. You know, so many ways to do dirt that if a person wants to do it, they're going to find a yeah. way to do it. I yeah. always live by the code that, you know, God, don't you let me be no fool. And eventually, if I'm supposed to know what's done in the dark, will come to the light. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. That's where my last thoughts are going to come from. I, I would advise our listeners to to look inward. Because number one, whether you think you can or not, and the answer is you cannot control another person. You just cannot. I don't care how much you love them, how long you've been together. There is absolutely nothing that you can do that is going to get them to do what you want them to do. I think it's important to know that. But I think also it's important to see the value in you. Now, if my wife decides to go out and go home with the waiter with that example today i can't stop her from doing that but what will happen is she would have lost a hell of a husband and and i know that um i can you know i will rebound and the universe will bring to me what i need to have and i didn't always feel that way because i think in my 20s had we had cell phones i probably would have been wanting to know who is that texting you because I didn't feel this way. I didn't have a level of confidence that I have today. I know that I bring a lot of value to things that I do. And one of the things that I do really well is being a husband and being a father. And if you don't value that by showing me that you're going home with the waiter, then someone else will. But it's not for me to control any of that. For me, the joy is in knowing that you're doing voluntarily for me just what I'm doing voluntarily for you. And while I'll see a beautiful waitress, I know that my wife has never cut my tires (laughs) or broke my windshield (laughs) or stayed out all night or whatever. And I know she cares for me. So I'm not going to risk because I know what I have in terms of value. Mm -hmm. So, guys, thank you guys so much. We have a meaty, meaty podcast for our listeners to listen to over and over again. There's so much information shared tonight. And I believe we did leave some meat on the bone, especially around our sex conversation. So if you guys are up for it, uh, we'll come back again and we will add more value there because I like to be practical in this. And sometimes we can just say, guys, there's really nothing to be done. There's really nothing to be done. I don't know if you ever tell that to folks that come and, and sit in your offices, but I don't know. Maybe I feel like there's just nothing to be done sometimes. So as we close out, I'm going to let um, uh, our panelists, our guests to uh, give us our, you know, any last thoughts that you may have. And then I'll, I'll close this out. Ms. Vani, any, any last thoughts? Um, yeah, I love what you said, Kelly, about the self-awareness piece. And really it's about knowing your own worth and your own value and what you bring to the table and again, if someone can't, you know, 
appreciate that, if they can't reciprocate that, then maybe you have some decisions to make that better serve you for where you are and who you feel that you are. Um, I, relationships take work. They We don't get instruction manuals for them. Um, a lot of times it is going to be trial and error. It is going to be experience uh, and, and the word commitment. Sometimes we just got to commit and hang in there even yeah. when we're not schooling like rabbits or even when everything isn't clicking and we're not happy and it's not puppy dogs and roses. We got to stick with that word commitment that, that I'm in it to win you know i got you i'm your rider and so we're gonna go through this thing together because it's it's tough enough just to grow and evolve individually but then when you're trying to do that with another person who's Mm -hmm. not you that can be even more so just like i said at the end of the day sometimes you just got to be in it to win it and you got to commit and stick it out i'm not saying stick with abuse or anything crazy but you know sometimes if it's just we're not clicking right now we're not vibing we're not on the same page, go see a marriage counselor, go to a coach and and work it out, stick it out. Know that your relationship is worth it. And speaking of which, before we go to Mr. Elam, how can our guests, and we're going to have all the right contact information in our show notes as well as on our YouTube page, but if someone needed to reach out to you, um, Dr. Gathers, I know you do online as well as in person. How would they be able to reach you? So it's pretty simple. My name, GiovannaGethers.com, which is on the screen. Uh, You can definitely go there. You can purchase my books. Epiphany is my second book. Why Am I Still Single is my first book. And it is a relationship self-help book for women and specifically for African-American women. So I talk about trust and the angry black woman and all of those things and just how to work through your own stuff, even if you've got mommy or daddy issues. Um, So definitely I'm on um, Facebook, Giovanna Gathers. I'm on Instagram. I am Giovanna Gathers. But again, you can certainly connect with me through my website and just look at a list of the services that I offer there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Elam. Vani, I got to get that book. So we about to talk like right after this. Okay. I, I, I like, I like that. I like that. Why am I still single? But um, I think that um, Kelly, you and um, uh, Vani touched on this as well of just about just self awareness. I think that that is so pivotal of what we do. We have to understand that we don't have we don't have self awareness about our level of emotions. Men, we don't have a we don't have our self awareness. Uh, women, and so we have. To, I think that we really need to start there. And there was no formal education when it comes to matters of the heart. All the things that were like really important, like we didn't get the education along the way. Right. We had health class, but that's it. Right. Um, You know, financial literacy, whole nother conversation. Right. Didn't get it. Right. Um, uh, Relationships. Everybody's what? Baptism by fire. Right. So, you know, we didn't have any formal education. Here we are on the back end, understanding that inside of the U.S., 50 percent of the marriages end inside of divorce. Inside of the uh, minority community, it's 70 percent. So we have to really look at this. You line up 10 black couples, statistically 70, excuse me, line up 10 black couples. Seven of them statistically don't make it. We can throw out tonight's whole conversation and we have to now ask, why is that? Mm-hmm. Seven out of 10 don't make it. That and it's 50 percent just period. And, you know, inside of the black community, we're always going to be higher issue and whatever everybody else deals with so we have to begin to peel back the onion of just saying that if we're going to sign up for commitment if we're going to sign up for forever there's a due diligence that has to be done pre during post all of that's necessary and you can throw out giovanni you can throw out uh, excuse me throw out vani i just giovanni i gave you a name we can throw out vani we can throw out elam we can throw out kelly you got to do some work because the stats right now show for those that are uh, married or want to get married that it might not work. And so I always like to share with people, you know, if you're about to play, if you if you played a sport and you're about to go up against the team that is the most difficult, how do you practice two, three weeks before? You don't practice the same way that you do just regularly. You turn it up a little bit. There is a responsibility that comes with being inside of a committed relationship, inside of being married. And if you're not willing to do it, it's okay. If you just, ladies, if you just want to have somebody that just wants to clean your pipes, that's fine. Men, if you just want to go out here and sew yourself, that's fine. But if you want to, well, that's fine within your space. But if you really want to be in a committed relationship, it is work. Okay. Hopeless romantic people. 
oh, you get on my nerves, right? Because it's really work behind this thing, right? And y'all just be shedding all this other stuff. It shouldn't have to be that hard. It's hard. Okay, being wealthy is hard. It's not easy, right? But being poor is 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 actually difficult too. People just don't understand that either. So just. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I appreciate you, Kelly, for just even having this platform for giving individuals an opportunity of just learning. Um, if we could just have affected two or three people tonight, I feel like that this is absolutely amazing. Um, and so you can follow me on at Elam B. King at all on all platforms. And, uh, you know, just thank you so much, for Kelly, for just having me uh, just on this forum tonight. Thank you both. And I think the podcast will pick up a few of both of your books and we'll give away because we're um, we've got folks that leave voicemails and different things. I like for folks, if you've listened to the podcast all the way through, leave us a voicemail in the show notes. There's a platform. All you have to do is click on that link. It'll take you directly to a Web page. You don't even have to make up uh, uh, pick up your phone to make a call. You can record your voicemail there. Let us know what you thought about this discussion. And if you're the first few folks, uh, let's call it 10, because I'll get five and five. We'll have five copies of Vonnie's book and five of Elam's. And uh, we'll we'll shoot those out to you. Uh, but we do want to hear from you. Uh, let us know what you think and some areas that perhaps we didn't cover that you may have questions about. We only asked five questions tonight. So I know there are a lot more questions in these relationships and things that we can we can help you do. But I'm looking forward to having both of these uh, folks back. Uh, there's a lot of value tonight. I would say listen to the podcast more than once uh, because a lot of times you hear something differently the second time around. Thank you, Miss Gathers. Thank you, Mr. King, for your time. And thank you for your energy. Let's, uh, podcast guys, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. And we will talk to you soon. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.